Ms. Diana Samarasan, Founding Executive Director, Disability Rights Advocacy Fund and Disability Rights Fund. So today, we will speak to how the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities and the Sustainable Development Goals can and already have begun to ensure that especially marginalized sectors of the disability community participate. We will start with statements from the UK and Australia who are both key development partners of the Disability Rights Fund and the Disability Rights Advocacy Fund and who have been tireless in ensuring that no one is left behind and have also been groundbreaking in their recognition of the intersectionality of rights and a need to focus on the multiple identities that people have in order to truly achieve dignity and equity of opportunity. We'll then move to presentations from three women with disabilities who represent different marginalized sectors. Yeni from the community of people with psychosocial disabilities, Pratima from the indigenous movement, and Esther from the emergent women with disabilities movement in Haiti. Minister Baroness Verma, Parliamentary Under Secretary of State, Department for International Development, United Kingdom. And also as the UK's ministerial champion to end violence against women and girls overseas, the leave no one behind promise is something that is extremely close to my heart. My officials and I have been taking an uncompromising approach to ensure that this is fulfilled. So events like this are so important in shining a light on women's and girls with disability, women and girls with disabilities who are particularly so often invisible and are suffering multiple discrimination both on the basis of their gender and their disability. Many remain trapped in poverty, socially isolated, lacking opportunities, and very often suffering ho horrific violations on their rights. The evidence is clear. When women and girls also have a disability, they are so much more likely to face abuse, violence, rape, and are much less likely to access justice opportunities and support. We are, however, beginning to see disability inclusion and, in com and complex issues around multiple exclusion be being brought to the forefront of our development work. With the confirmed global goals for the first time, we have a framework that is and should be truly inclusive of everyone, including those with disabilities. Using the goals, our generation has the potential to eradicate poverty for everyone for good. But we must all ensure that the global goals deliver on their promise of equity and inclusion and rightly ensure that regardless of ethnicity, gender, geography, race, disability, or any other status, no one can be left behind. My department and I personally are determined to do what we can to address this. Mr. Mika Kontiainen, Director Disability Development Policy Division, Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, Australia. On behalf of the Australian Government, I want to reinforce the message that we are committed to supporting disability inclusive development to enable people with disabilities in developing countries to find pathways out of poverty and to realise their full potential. As we know, disability is part of human diversity with the majority of people likely to experience disability at some stage in their life. The experience of disability manifests differently for all individuals, which should be taken into account in our development efforts. We recognise that some groups within the disability community are at heightened risks of mar marginalisation. As Baroness Verma has mentioned, women and girls with disabilities face particular challenges Similarly, psychosocial and intellectual disabilities can compound marginalisation, discrimination and vulnerability. Many are rendered invisible, misunderstood and left out of disability inclusive development efforts. This is why we partner with organisations that enable the voices of a diverse range of people with disabilities to be heard. 
Australia recognises the inherent rights and dignity of people with disabilities and is committed to enabling all people to exercise these rights through our development efforts. Ms. Jenny Rosa Damayanti, Chairperson, Indonesia Mental Health Association. We tackled the, Indone the, 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 the new Indonesian Disability Act. So uh, we collaborate with other uh, groups with disabilities to draft a new Indonesian Disability Act based on CRPD. And we make sure that the interest of person with psychosocial disability to be involved in that draft. And then we did a lobby together and I'm very, feel very, very honored because in very short time for being marginalized, here I am together with other groups of disability which is already established. Uh, thank you again for the RF because <laughs> giving us the means to advocate for this law. And we already, uh, the, already uh, the, 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 the law already passed. If we can really make this, uh, this law to be implemented in a proper way, there will be a huge, huge, huge improvement of the life of people with disability in Indonesia, including people with psychosocial disability. Thank you. Ms. Pratima Gurung, Asia Regional Coordinator, Indigenous Persons with Disabilities Global Network. We, Indigenous Persons with Disabilities, suffer from multiple blow of discriminations, both from the public and private sphere, because of the gender, disability, indigenous identity, and cultural practices. We are the pocket of the extreme poor and vulnerable people because of the violence and abuse. We are at the high level of risk and disaster in the emergencies and crisis, with the struggling to exist as one of the most risk population of the globe. We have barriers to participate in many social activities like lack to access to development programs, funds, educations, employment, health, and information. However, now we believe that these are not the obstacles and this, this should not be the barrier for us, but because the rather it's a key for our success and prosperity for an equitable society we live. As a change maker of the society, we, indigenous peoples, have been contributing through partnership with others to make a prosperous and peaceful society since, since centuries. For instance, being indigenous people, our traditional knowledge, values, understanding of life, and living with the nature cannot be simply defined, but can be understood as a collection of knowledge that is passed down and that is developed through generations. As many indigenous communities have survived through cycles of environmental change, that includes information that would undoubtedly be useful for the current climate change debate. The principle that guides us to live in the culture of respecting the diversity, human values, and mother earth, integrate to make an inclusive society, no matter where we are, how we are, and who we are. Therefore, we understand that we are not the problem, but the key solution in many aspects of lives that we can do better to make this world fit and feel for all. Ms. Esther Lewis, Executive Director, L'Union des Femmes à Mobilité Réduite de Haïti. No, if Morash no souci pour les combat discrimination, stigmatisation et violation de femmes handicapées, in order for my organization to address discrimination, exclusion, and stigmati stigmatization of women with disabilities in my country, ça fait nous rencontrer avec DRF qui a travaillé pour faire tout le monde rentrer dans un seul panier. And we've started to work with DRF, um, the organization that is supporting us to make our voice heard. Maintenant, ça fait jeudi à nous gain chance vinn là pour nous discuter de problèmes fi et ti fi qui gain handicap et nous joui tout de un peu l'autre privilège parce que nous rivé participer nan élaboration d'un rapport alternatif sous CEDA and because of the support we got from DRF the technical support we got from DRF We've been able, for the first time, to submit a contribution to the CEDAW committee 
on the situation of women with disabilities in Haiti. Et également un examen périodique universel. We've also submitted a contribution for the universal periodic review. Et c'était première fois dans l'histoire femme handicapée que nous t'ai joint privilège pour nous porter tout problème femme handicapée ça dans niveau international. And for the first time Organizations of women with disabilities had this opportunity to make our voice heard at the international level. If Morash tout est profité fait en pile plaidoyer auprès de autorité pour conscientiser pour prendre des décisions qui claires pour protéger droits femmes handicapées. And with support of the RF also, we advocate for the government, for the state to be able to fulfill its responsibility as regard to the implementation of the convention. Dixième anniversaire, CCRDPH là, même Jean tout nous ajouté au DD au la donne. Um, to conclude, we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of the CR, CRPD mm -hmm. and also we've launched the SDGs. Mais m'a rappelé nous tout que tout droit que qui gagne Kounia était déjà été là. But I would, only, I would like to remind you that SDGs are not new. They don't bring new rights. Mais seulement, ma fait, ma lancé un appel à tout organe ONU et également à organisation droits humains. And um, I would like to tell all the United Nations systems and all the other organizations um, working on human rights issues. Kounia, nous pas voulu que mot qui phrase qui c'est tout le monde en dedans reton slogan mais faut qu'il appliqué because we want to leave no one behind slogan to be a reality uh, merci beaucoup et m'a toujours m'a remercié DRF tout pour tout support lié thank merci you very much and thank you DRF for your support